I am proud to finally present to you my newly designed hand crank turntable. This week I'll show you how I made it. If I had something actuating further away from the center to turn this, that would work. I needed a gear and luckily I had built something a number of years ago that had one and I had a template. So that's where I started. The gear that I designed has got very large teeth. It's a, it's a big heavy gear and that's because I'm using wood. The larger teeth will have more bulk and won't break off. By wrapping this stainless ruler around the cylinder, it gives me a nice hard edge to connect all these lines and create the spiral that will shape our worm gear. So I'm going to power carve this thing, but initially what I've got to do is I've got to get a good groove in there. And so I'm starting with a saw and then I go to a gouge and then I go to a file and all of this is going to lay the groundwork for uh, dropping in a, a rotary tool that without this groove would just skitter across the top of this cylinder with, with no aim whatsoever. On the outset, Carving gear teeth seems very simple, but that simplicity just disappears when you try to get gears to mesh. Each tooth has a very specific shape, and so I angle the bit to achieve that. The rounded teardrop bit helps me get the sides and widen each of the valleys between the teeth. Up until now, the lathe has only been a chuck, you know, something to hold the workpiece, but now I'm actually using it at the slow speed for sanding. I use the same template for the drive gear as I did the worm gear. It's a little easier here to see the complex nature of these teeth. Each one has about five or six different contours that has to be shaped so that it doesn't bind. Not too shabby for an initial test run. This beautiful mahogany will be a spacer between the drive gear and the turntable on top.
it's late. With both gears cut, it's now their moment of truth. Is this thing gonna work or not? I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow to find out. When I stopped last night, I thought, yeah, this thing is gonna work out pretty good, but just to be sure, I wanna do a mock-up. So I'm using the old floor and the old setup that I've, I've based everything on so far, and I'm, I'm building this to just see and make sure that everything is meshing properly, and it does. I wanted to show it off a little bit, so I wanted to rebuild the floor. I'm not going to use as much MDF as I had before, and I'm going to make it semi-transparent so you can see below it, even to the point of making the turntable itself small. The new subframe is all going to be made out of American Black Walnut. The walnut's going to accent that reddish-brown sapele of the main frame very nicely. For this type of joinery, I use a pen, and in this case I'm using bamboo. It works fantastic as long as you roll it as you're cutting like you see I'm doing here. If I tried to use a saw, even a fine saw, it would just fray the ends. This is the newly sized turntable, and you'll see once I put it in the bottom of the display, it's quite a bit smaller and gives us a lot more view of what's happening underneath the turntable. Here I'm adding the last two little brackets that I need for the worm gear drive. These are the supports for that. Once these are in place and then glued to the H-frame, the turntable subfloor will be complete. I'm going through each of the gears now and looking for any binding. I just mark any hesitation and then take it out with a little bit of filing.
What I'm trying to do here is measure how long the handle can be coming off of the shaft that turns our worm gear. Too long, and I'm scraping my knuckles. Too short, and you've got to turn a million times to get it to move an inch. So um, the longer I can have it, the better. contrast. I can now use a scratch-all to put my design directly on the brass. 